everybody else can hear. The only thing is that, uh, who's presenting tonight? Me. Okay. So it should be okay, I believe. I think they're frozen. No, they're not. Wave to me, guys. They move. There we go. Okay. Can you hear us without an echo? Yes. Yep. Okay. They may not be able to talk there. Okay. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Mm -hmm. I can tell Sharon and I have been teachers because we check to see if people really read their homework. Mm -hmm. But more than that, a couple of things. It's hard when you're doing Zoom for everybody to get a chance to talk. And so I'd like to uh, make sure that we have a little extra time for people to talk and to be able to say prayers. So don't be afraid if there's a little bit of silence. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes by the time someone reaches over and, uh, and turns on their microphone, it's already gone on to someone else. So if you know you have something you want to say or if you want to pray, put your microphone on then. Otherwise, we get ambient noises from around people. So it's kind of nice to keep it on, but I do want you to talk. Let's have a prayer and get going. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we're always thankful when we're able to get together and to study your word and to discuss it and to yes. be able to learn and to be able to know the answers that someone else may ask us in the future. Sometimes it's too easy for us to forget what we've learned and to think that we know it. So we ask you to be with each of us and the Holy Spirit. Help to work with our memories to make sure that what we, we learn when we're studying your word, that it stays in our minds and in our hearts and in our mouths so that we yes. can share with others. We uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, that without you, we would feel lost. Yes. And we would have to be relying on on other things with the word and not always able to understand it. So we ask your blessing to be with us tonight and to guide us, put words and thoughts in our minds and help us to share our love for you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Being a teacher... <laughs> I know it's important for you to remember yeah. what you read and studied yes. in the past. So can you tell me what have you learned about the Holy Spirit up until now? And I also know that people a lot of times only wait five seconds for someone to answer, but I'll wait longer. So what have you learned about the Holy Spirit up till now? He's a person. He's a what? Person. Okay. No, the person. A person. He transforms us. He transforms us. What else is he? He is, he is fully God. He's he fully God. Fully. Great. You got that one. Yeah, he's fully God. And so he knows... He knows everything about us, yeah. but he knows He's, everything since creation and before. What else have we learned about the Holy Spirit? Well, you just he said was, he's omniscient. Yeah. And beside that, he's omnipresent. And? His presence is with us everywhere, anywhere. All the time. And, and, and I learned in this lesson, he's omnipotent, all-powerful. All powerful too, yeah. What he else is there? The writers of the Bible. He what? He inspired the writers. Of yes. All of them. Wow. Yes. Good. So, how does he affect us? 
How does he communicate with us? Through the written word, through God's word. Through God's one, word. One right. way. Yes. All right. And is he as powerful as God? Yes. 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 And why? Because he's fully God. Because he's fully God. Right. <laughs> Hey, see, Sharon, I knew, I knew you'd have this. So <laughs> he has, he has the same, he has the same attributes as God the Father, God the Son. Yeah, that's that's why Jesus said that he could, uh, that he was there to represent his Father. He and his Father are one. Just so the Holy Spirit and Father and Son are one in purpose and everything else. And why does that make them stronger? Why does, why does that it make them stronger? Uh, you know, I think about in a, in a marriage, and, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of things that are said about marriages, but when you become one, what do you know about the other one? You Just know about everything. Quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what they're thinking all the time, or you know how they're going to react? Right. As they are one. You know, I looked up uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 2, 10 and 11, uh-huh. and it said, For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For those For who among people knows the thoughts of a person except the spirit of the person that is in him? So Mm -hmm. also the thoughts of God, no one knows except the spirit of God. Wow. So it shows you really how how close. There you go. We're back. Are you back? Yeah. All righty. They haven't gone to school. There we go. Good. Good. Okay, and uh, also in Hebrew 9, 13. Okay, Hebrews 9, 13. was, you know, it's talking about sacrifice, you know, for if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled, sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So you skip to thinking about the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, you think the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God. So what does that mean? (laughs) That he was pure. Pure. Spotless, sinless. Spotless, sinless. Offered himself without blemish to God. So one other one. And then I'd like to review what we've done. But uh, I think it was Linda. Um, I don't know, remember, I think Linda last night brought up about um, the Holy Spirit and blasphemy, you know, with the Holy Spirit. And that's in uh, Matthew 12, 31. And it says, therefore, I say to you, every sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against who? The Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. So the next verse, and whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. So shows the power of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of, and I think probably what bothers me is how many people overlook the Holy Spirit. 
they, and, and I think probably we're all a little guilty of it. As we uh, look at the Holy Spirit, we start, people start, uh, they, and we talked about it before, having a picture of what God, you know, at least in their mind looks like. And they have a picture of Jesus Christ because they saw him as a man living among humans. But the Holy Spirit is sometimes where people think it's kind of a nebulous thing, and so they don't don't really pay attention to it. But our lesson today with a third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit has abilities that can be attributed only to God. God. Right. And this spirit is called, and Sharon pointed out, eternal omnipresent, and the one who reveals the truths about God. Now, before we had also had some that re- revealed about Jesus Christ, but this is who reveals the truths about God. Mm-hmm. So as when you go on down, knowing that these are the truths that only God himself would know. So the Apostle Paul, and we've seen that before in, in texts we've had previously, talk about the Spirit, the Lord, and God. Mm-hmm. As the you know, giving the spirit as the third person in the Godhead. How would you explain to someone about the Godhead? So if you were thinking someone just said, Well, I think there's only God, how would you explain to them about the Godhead? Well, I like the example that Griselda gave the other night. How she explained to her eight yeah, year old granddaughter about the with the triangle. Triangle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I agree. I like that. It's that's a perfect, I would say, uh, illustration of of the Godhead, the triune God. Right. So that that so that they start seeing it as the complete completeness. Yes. Yeah, without it's, it's it, not a complete it's, triangle. Yeah. One one part is missing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in the first uh, paragraph, it ends with, uh, you know, God commanded those who are baptized into the Christian faith faith to be baptized in the name of all three: the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yeah. because all three play an important role in one's conversion. Right. Yeah. So. How do they affect conversion? Each one plays an important role. I mean, the Holy Spirit is the one that convinces somebody. That convinces or convicts someone. Convicts, yeah, somebody to, uh, to accept the truth as it is presented in Jesus. Okay, so they work together. And obviously, you, they, they are also using us as human beings, you know, to convey, to, to share these, these truths, you know, that we believe. And, um, but the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts somebody of the truth. And also mm-hmm. of the sin, you know. So first possibly of the sin and then of the truth. And then, you know, uh, brings the hope, brings love and all the rest what we know about the spiritual or the fruits of the spirit uh, they come into a life of a person who has accepted the truth in jesus so does that mean all of us have the holy spirit in us yes good good yeah yes the the lesson brought out that it's a quickening power it yeah. quickens and and an example of that was uh, was Paul on the wet on when he was Saul on the road to Damascus. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He he was you know he was dead in his sins, but through the quickening power of the Holy Spirit, he became alive again. I know that's a great example of the power of God converting someone to accept Jesus. Yeah, yeah, particularly Paul. Yes, who, who had been doing doing the opposite. So, so what does uh, an omnipotence, what does it mean? All-powerful. Okay, it says all-powerful. So why is it that so many people only think of God as all-powerful? I mean, well, God. God is a triune. God is a triune God. 
So does that tell you how powerful <laughs> each each part of the uh, Godhead is? Now, they we often think about. I I think a lot of times when people are are uh, studying the Bible, they they see Jesus Christ and they see God, and we've been. Uh, it's surprising when you go through and see how many texts there are talking about the Holy Spirit throughout the whole Bible, not just the uh, the uh, New Testament, but the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. But Luke, Luke was talking, uh, and it you know had it listed in there with uh, Luke one thirty five, and uh, it was talking about Mary, and you know I had just watched the chosen section uh, about Mary when she was repeating back, telling the story of the birth of uh, Jesus, and they said uh, you know when the angel came to her, and uh, you know she's the angels talking to her and talking about the coming birth and the angels answered and said unto her, because she's trying to figure this out. The Holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the Holy thing, which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God. Now, what did he refer to in the Holy, Holy spirit there says the angel referred to the Holy Spirit as the power of the highest. Mm-hmm. So what does that really mean? Um, that means that uh, God himself performed the act itself in the, in the, in, in the being the Holy Spirit. Well, when he's talking about the Holy Spirit, there he says, you know, as the power of the highest. So the oh, he's exalted. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He's exalted. He he's the highest of of of, yeah. of all. He's exalted so so much so that he can do anything in his power, including what he did to, uh, you know, in the incarnation of Jesus. So that's his exalted power because that's what he did in creation. He's so powerful. He's exalted because of that. Yeah. We welcome Gloria tonight. I'm sorry. All right. Gloria. Gloria is here with us tonight. Yeah, she says she's going to zoom on. She's going to try to zoom on. Yeah, Glad she did. Well, Gloria's there. Well, yeah. Hi, guys. That's really not Gloria. Is that Hi. It's me. Yeah, yes. It's, good. it's me. Good. Oh, it's so good to hear your voice. Yes. Yes. Pastor. Well, I'm impressed with you. I I talked to Chris earlier, so he has to take good care of you now. Right. <laughs> I know. Uh, the neighbors took him to dinner because he hasn't been eating this whole time I've been here. So the neighbors came and got him and took him to dinner. Oh, good. But I want to thank all of you guys for all the prayers. I appreciate them very much. Well, those prayers are going to continue. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We love you. I love you, too. Yeah. I still am very impressed that you're joining us tonight. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Okay. Going on, you know, you had already kind of talked about the uh, Apostle Paul had experienced the converting power of the Spirit on the road to Damascus, road to Damascus. and um, in Romans 15:19, when it said, "Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about, uh, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ." So, it's with with Paul. I I really am impressed that sometimes people think that they are not worthy or they don't have the talents or they don't have the, you know, whatever it takes to be able to talk to to people. But you look at what Paul was and what Paul became. And by having the Holy Spirit, and it says the Spirit of God, being able to go out and be able to preach to others <laughs> and be able to... Mm-hmm tell about Jesus and uh, God, because earlier we saw, you know, where he 
he would take the word about Jesus, but he said also to reveal the truths about God. So mm -hmm. when you're looking at, uh, I'm kind of watching the uh, time since we got started later, but I'd like to uh, cover a few more of these sections. Uh, when it was talking about, uh, and if you go to this second, on page 21, if you go to this first column on the first paragraph on this, the second column, it was uh -huh. from Romans 8:11. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead should also quicken your mortal bodies by a spirit that dwelleth in you. So oh. if I, I had asked the other night, and I really like to hear what you have to say. What does it look like if you have the spirit of God dwelling in you? At a time you may be uh, start, start thinking to do something and the spirit says, no, I need to do this, I need to do that for him. He will he will take take things away from us that, that we that we that we shouldn't that we're where we shouldn't be. It's like when David is uh ornated, the fourth spirit fell upon David even as a boy, because he was anointed by God. And he, I think and it, it. I think it radiates like a peace, um, a peace that people can see. I think yes. it radiates love. I think when you're when when uh, when you're you have the Holy Spirit, I think people can see that they can see it and feel it. Um, but I think to me, I think it's more to by the 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 action. I, you can see the Holy Spirit working or living in someone by, you know, how they how they respond to things, how they talk, how they interact with other people. Um, so you see those fruits of the Spirit in them. You can, like I said, you see it and by their actions. And like I said, they just radiate, radiate that that peace and love um, from. When they have the Holy Spirit, so, but I always think of it as more of a of a doing, not necessarily a feeling. But I I can see church members in our congregation who radiate that, and I'm like I can tell that the the, the Spirit is strong in them, and their relationship with God is strong just by how they, um, you know, present themselves and just their they're emitting those that love and that peace all the time. Mm -hmm. Paul, when he was talking about the Holy Spirit, he said that in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, he said, if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they are all uh, tangible and they are action words. All of them are action words, okay? And you know this because it says it's love, it's joy, it's patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And he says against this, there's nothing, no law. Uh, why? Because they're coming from the Holy Spirit that lives in you. They're in complete harmony with God's will. And these are actually the, the real signs that somebody has, the Holy Spirit. That's how we know. And the good thing is, as, as Brenda pointed out, somebody else is going to see that. It doesn't mean necessarily that I will see it in myself. No. But others will see it in me. And that's what counts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I look too in uh, Titus. Because I was thinking, okay, over your lifetime, you know, if you start looking back and you think, oh, I wished I hadn't done that, you know, <laughs> sometime in your lifetime. <clears throat> Yet if we had the Holy Spirit in us, I was looking at Titus, and it was 3, verse 4, said, but when the kindness of our God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we did in righteousness, but in accordance with his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, 
whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Praise God. Right. So our regeneration. So if you you have had the Holy Spirit and you kind of start taking a different path pathway, I thought it was good to know that regeneration, renewing of the Holy Spirit. And so it said, so that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So there's always hope. Mm -hmm. There's always trust. There's always strength. So, and it, the other text I really liked was in John six sixty three when it said, it is the spirit who gives life. And sometimes that comes through regeneration. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, one other part I would like to to uh, go over because they had done part of it, but there is it. But it went further on. Um, turning on on page twenty two, was talking about uh, Ananias. And Sapphira, yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> he was talking to them. And so it's in Acts 5. Acts 5, and then was said verses maybe, 3 and 4. But maybe before and after. If I can get back here. Acts 5, verses 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. So we all know the story of that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Peter has said, you know, he asked him, you know, why had uh, Satan filled his heart to the Holy, you know, to lie to the Holy Spirit? Ooh. And to keep back some of the proceeds of the land. Now, it says, while it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? So why is it you've conceived of this deed in, in your heart? So why that's, do you, why Dorothy, is that? That's the, Dorothy, that's the first case after the church started of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And, but what was the consequences of that? Death. Death. Immediate but, death. But knowing some of the sins that people did that we read about in the Bible, why was this one so serious? Because they promised to give it all they received for the land. The, the, serious, the seriousness of that particular sin was because it was the early stages of the church, and God did not want that to be a distraction for Amen. the rest of the congregation. They didn't... God did not want that as a precedent. It was also that is they had come together and all agreed what they were doing. To they had come all. together as one. And the yeah. reason why I'm bringing this up is I, I thought, you know, we, we often just stop where it is that, you know, they said, uh, you know, putting them to death and we don't stop and think about it. But they had come together as a group, as one. And when this happened, that they, they disobeyed and lied. And it's kind of, it's kind of, the seriousness was of what they had together promised. So I, I was just thinking though, it's, it's kind of like a church. If a church is, is uh, don't know which way to move my computer here. If a church is together compared to it, this kind of came up today. I have to bring this up. Uh, Delbert would appreciate it that uh, uh, my son-in-law, Ron and Roy came over and Ron had a big box of things that were for uh, the Hope Radio of when it was first started and all of the things to, so I can give it to Delbert. And um, in it, there was something else because at one time, believe it or not, our church was very splintered and people weren't coming together to do the things that they needed to do for 
you know, to accomplish anything. And, and we were talking, comparing that to now, to know how much a church can do when they're all working together. And this was the problem that Ananias and Sapphira had is they, they wanted to do their own thing. And so in doing that, it weakened the group. But they had made a promise, and when they made that promise, they did not follow through. Well, and so it, it really was a case of, uh, you know, down in verse 32 it said, And we are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Well, one important point here. In this whole story and uh, when it, you know, when it comes to the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works. You see, many times we think, well, I, you know, I did make this uh, promise to the church. Did you hear me what I said? To the church. As if the church is completely separate from God and the Holy Spirit and everything. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. if I break my uh, promise to the church, my, uh, I don't know, uh, if I promise to, to give an offering, for example, we had these special offerings, but we were, you know, uh, pro we, we call them, what do we, I'm trying to remember, these are pledges, right? Pledges, for example, because this was a pledge from their side, okay? Or, or even other things. We think, I did that for the church. No, you did it no. to the Holy Spirit. Ah, no. You did it to God. Yeah. The yeah. church is just yeah. the visible part of it on this earth. So you are breaking your promise to the Holy Spirit. You can thank God that the, that the Holy Spirit doesn't work today, or does he, as uh, he did in that time? There's a reason why this whole thing happened. I don't want to go into that. But, you know, the thing is that sometimes we are looking at our promises as I'm doing it to the church. I'm doing yeah. it to, to the, I don't know, to, to the leadership of the church or whatever. No, you do it to God. You promise to God. You promise to, and I'm going to come to the pastor and tell him, hey, I can't do it. You can mm -hmm. tell me what you want. It's fine. You know, but is it fine with, the, with God? That's the question. Mm -hmm. What many miss. The when church is, the church is God's church. Exactly. When we are back. Sometimes we say my church. It, it's God's church. Yeah. When we are baptized. We dedicate our lives to dying to self and living for mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Yes. We mm -hmm. promise to God at that time that the old man is dead and a new person has been raised from the dead in the presence of Jesus Christ. Now, if we carry that on and yet we decide, ooh, I have a sin that I don't want to give up. Have we not done the same thing as Ananias and Sapphira? Have we not kept back part of our promise to God uh, unto ourselves? And, and God is warning us that what is going to happen is that will lead to death. I, I, I think of an example that a friend of mine brought up many years ago. How about a room in a house? If you promise the whole room to God, Oh, house of God, and you leave like Yoga said. This this part, but I don't want. Let, I don't want, want let in. That's what I think is. And then if I was doing, we're not giving hundred percent to God. They 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 were living giving ten percent, whatever is left to the world. They want and 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 the rest was they want to think with God that was good enough. Well, I think the the danger in this is. Is when you're making promises, you're thinking through who you are making those promises to. Uh, the one thing I, I liked at the very end of this lesson, and we need to get to prayers for sure, was in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Paul ends his second letter to the Christians in Corinth this way. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful and blessing. That's a beautiful <laughs> blessing. And he said, mm -hmm. you know, how appropriate, though, he said, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All so, three. So, yeah, since we got a little late start, we're late getting to prayers. But, uh, Pastor, would you like to end when we're?
people when we're there, but if we could go ahead and um, if we'd like to give time to make sure that particularly when we're on Zoom that people have a chance to be able to uh, do their prayers. But Delbert, would you uh, begin our prayers? 